Come on then, let's go. Simplicity can be something of a curse word in the gaming world, an adjective applied to casual games or the streamlining of beloved franchises. But of course, simplicity can also be a strength, a solid foundation for the production of skill, an opportunity to focus gameplay and narrative, or simply as a means to an end. The Mario series is certainly not lauded for its complexity, but its creative twists on a small group of fundamentals. But the subtraction of gameplay mechanics is also one of the main seeds of resentment players have for a number of sequences in gaming, with things like the abandonment of an entire game's central mechanics for a boss battle, some unexpected minigame, or the mandatory turret section, the latter of which often attempts to make the player feel empowered and able to face impossible odds, but almost always does the opposite. Opposite, making the player feel vulnerable and ultimately unnecessary. In most modern action games, these sections appear as static defensive moments, or heavily scripted on-rail segments. But no matter the context in which they're presented, they are almost always just an insulting reduction of gameplay mechanics, feeling less like the Terminator and more like Mad Dog McCree. These moments focus the game's core mechanics into a singular purpose. There is no longer controlled movement, narrative is thrown to the side, and what the game developers have spent most of their time smoothing out is traded in for short, immersion-breaking bits of Michael Bay nonsense. But of course, there are a number of ways these sections can still be effective, as pieces of gameplay or as narrative instruments. One of the more in-your-face places where these can succeed is by channeling the spirit of flashy action films and just dousing the player in visual distractions. These segments are actually some of the few moments in gaming where clothes can matter more than the body beneath. Visuals can be a huge point of contention in the gaming community, and they've never really come close to a primary concern for me, but something that is hugely important for me is visual feedback, giving the player clear depictions of what his actions are doing in the game world. A zombie game wouldn't be much if your headshots weren't met with an opening skull. There's a reason why developers commit time to crafting decals like bullet holes and big explosion stains, because they're satisfying for the player to create. And this is one of the few ways that a turret section can be an effective bit of gameplay, by making the player feel powerful with well-rendered carnage. Visual feedback is a necessity for satisfying gunplay in general, and is something that a lot of games sadly don't make a priority. A game that was a resounding failure on all fronts, and a wonderful example of a terrible turret section, can be found in Duke Nukem Forever, an admittedly easy target. That perfectly displays how not to craft one of these sequences, and I consider its largest misstep being in how little of a response it gives to the player's involvement. The section I'm specifically referring to has the player attacking a massive alien ship as it fires titanic laser beams down at the ground below. It's thrilling on paper, but it ends up being just about as exciting as watching a game uninstall, as you fire endless bullets that only elicit seemingly random explosions from your target, while just watching a health bar slowly degrade. Thankfully, the smaller targets you're asked to fight go down easily and are at least forgettable rather than tedious. What should have made the player feel powerful is destroyed because the thousands of bullets you're sending out have no interesting effect on the world around you besides just swatting objects off screen. On the opposite end of the spectrum is Far Cry Blood Dragon's opening sequence, a thrillingly brief on-rail segment that overwhelms the senses by channeling 80s maximalist design tendencies. Neon colors, Little Richard, bright explosions, it's all a great time. Its biggest success, though, is just how much visual feedback is given to the player. Your gunfire creates massive eruptions that send bodies flying. And even if you aren't hitting your target, the stream of bullets you're firing hit the ground in a splash of particles. You could turn off the crosshair and the gameplay would go pretty much unhindered, which is a great sign. The icing on the cake is just how short the intro is, leaving you just as you get a grasp of what the hell is going on. It's a place where these turret sections fail often, as interactive transitional pieces, but Blood Dragon gives a bit of madness to set the tone for the rest of the game, and acts as a good handover from intro cutscene to main gameplay. It's not variety for variety's sake, it serves a purpose and exits the stage before the audience stops smiling. That's not to say that brevity and visual flair always create effective sequences. 
The conclusion of the beloved Mass Effect trilogy provides a crushing blow to that train of thought. The parts of this game that ask the player to mount a turret fail for two entirely new reasons, even if they are both pretty short and visually interesting. The first of which is that they inhibit the player, who is made vulnerable and far less effective in combat, when made stationary behind a slow-moving and slow-reloading weapon. If you're required to take part in these sections, the player has to be made more powerful, and the mechanics introduced have to blend well with the mechanics already established in the game. It seems thrown in to give the player variety, and keep the fans distracted while they stripped more stuff from under the hood. Like they were thinking, we made the game more linear, but the players won't notice if we give them some big guns to shoot. Mass Effect's turret sections just don't provide a good answer to the loss of your usual movement and abilities. Another series that sees a few of these moments fail for the same reasons is Call of Duty. They feel like obligatory additions, something mandated by the suits to be featured in the trailers, always trading COD's signature fast-paced combat to be stuck behind a gun. But one unforgettable moment in the series was found in Death from Above, a chilling but deftly executed on-rails mission, with simple mechanics and a long-lasting impression. It's subtractive gameplay done right. They took away pretty much everything that made Call of Duty tick, but then tossed you on a plane with some massive cannons. It was made even more incredible by the dryness of its implementation. The sound design was minimal, the visual effects were grounded in reality, and the reactions from the other people on board were casual, like you were all just working a 9 to 5 job. This was a simple segment, but it made the player feel like a god while still remaining true to the game's setting. Here is another avenue in which these game segments can work as bolsters for the game's narrative. And here is also the second, more significant failing in the Mass Effect's turret sequences. Specifically the final turret sequence, near the end of the game. The world is crashing down around you, and everything is pointing towards a disastrous, exciting conclusion. But everything comes to a ridiculously jarring halt when you have to stop and fend off some attacking husks. What makes it even worse is the fact that you don't even have to participate to succeed. Seed. You can simply just stare off into the distance and the story will progress as usual after a short bit of time. It was clearly added to heighten tension, the moment when the strings come in at the end of the song, but it's just a slap in the face. I still cannot comprehend the addition of this to the game. When you think of this as a transition from high-stakes cinematics to gameplay, it's a mess when compared to something like Blood Dragon's sequence, which also doesn't require involvement at all. But even worse is that it doesn't strengthen either the gameplay or the narrative in any way. As a counterexample of one of these sequences that actually does bolster the effectiveness of the game's narrative is found in Spec Ops The Line, where, after finding a helicopter, your character decides to attack instead of fleeing. It accentuates his descent into madness with big, bold letters, and also works as a pretty visually entertaining action set piece. It really isn't that different from any of these other turret sequences, but it works. It almost plays out like a parody of these sequences, with all these explosions and flying bodies having a strong hidden agenda. It's variety with a purpose. The pursuit of variety in gaming is something to be expected as more money is dumped into their creation. The money behind these games want as many people to be happy as possible, so the addition of one-off sections like these as a bit of variety, or as some fist-bumping moment of bloody power fantasy are probably here to stay. I can't act like I don't appreciate variety, and I can't act like I don't appreciate attempts to shake up a player that has gotten too comfortable with the game's mechanics. Massive changes that come without warning can create some of the most memorable experiences in gaming. It's not hard to be affected by sudden twists, and there's a reason why M. Night Shyamalan's early movies were such a success. The biggest problem in these is that they just aren't that fun to take part in. The turret section is an old mechanic in gaming, yet it has seen virtually no alteration since it first started appearing. It's just thrown in to check off a box on a development list, and as a quick and cheap gameplay changeup. But these sequences hold more power than most other tropes because of how destructive they can be to a game's overall mood. Dead Space, an action horror game whose tension was built around the idea of struggling to survive by managing ammunition and approaching combat patiently, featured an asteroid shoot-'em-up. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood had you firing a carriage-mounted cannon at one point. Sadly, more often than not, action games decide to feature unimaginative stuff like this, thinking that they keep things fresh. But now we're at the point where a majority of action games feature these sequences in near-identical fashions. And if you think about it, if every movie decides to have a twist, doesn't that mean none of them do?
Thank you so much for watching.